A hearty welcome. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. Are you well? I'm good. I'm Winter's my favorite month, so I'm happy to be here. Is it? <laughs> yeah, I love the rain. <laughs> <laughs> True, eh? You see, it was just another beautiful. type of rain, though. Yeah, it was beautiful. But then you need to be indoors and under the blankies. <laughs> no, I'm outside. <laughs> <laughs> so was I. So was I. And it was very refreshing. I actually enjoyed it. But not the driving bit, but okay. Just to be um, that very, yeah. yeah, that's true. So let's let's speak about, and I mustn't forget, the lady, you know, your your biggest fan is in, in studio with you. <laughs> she is. Yeah. And that is none other than mom. <laughs> Fairuz Mulaji, yes. Spot on, yeah. Spot on, right? Yeah. Amazing lady already, smart yeah, lady, <laughs> sitting in the red chair. With the red scarf. With the red <laughs> scarf, looking awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. We're gonna, we, we, we'll probably get to hear about mom and how she, you know, inspires Absolutely. you and, and, you know, what, what she means to you and yeah. to, to where you are today. Yeah. Right. So let's speak about what inspired you to start the Chasing Adam brand and how has it evolved since its inception. <laughs> Maybe we must first get a little bit of a background who, who Adam Jacobs is and then we get to understand yeah. how this brand came about. Absolutely. So I was studying, I was in my third year of um, environmental design, which is basically like interior design. And I decided, like, uh, I reached the point where I realized I wanted to do this, I wanted to go on this big trip. And it was either carry on with this degree or put all my time and effort into going on this trip, which I felt was far more important to me at that time. So Chasing Adam started with just scribbles in my book, in my journal. Nobody knew about it, not even my parents. So I began planning it, like bikes, routes, where I was going to go, where I was going to sleep, all that, doing all the research. And then in July, I made the decision to put my studies on hold and to go on this trip and Chasing Adam was born. <laughs> you you make it sound like, you know, <laughs> I, um, I woke up one day and I had this dream and yeah. and now I'm going to make this dream a reality. But now the love for cycling, um, mm. from what age have you been cycling and, and you know, why, yeah. why this dream? Why yeah. chasing Adam? So I've been cycling since I was a little kid. It started when I could just about walk. I used to sit on my dad's bike in a little kiddie seat. Yeah. And that was always like something special that my dad and I shared together. He'd take me to the BMX tracks and I'd go and do jumps and then, uh -huh. you know, bash my body up. And then go. <laughs> so cycling's always just been a big part of my life. And I kind of just use it as off-season training for when I was running, like I ran competitively in high school. So cycling was just like my little escape from everything that I did. And... I realized just like what you could do with a bicycle and how far you can go and what you can carry with a bicycle. Mm. So that's why I've chosen to go on a bike because it's the simplest way to travel, but it's also not the fastest or the slowest way to cover big distances. Mm. So share with us at the moment or experience that sparked the idea of yeah. this epic journey around the African continent. Absolutely. Everyone speaks about those moments when feels like the stars all align and the universe has just got the answer right in front of you. And it was actually on a trip up to a place called Nature's Valley. It's just before the border of the Eastern Cape. And two friends and myself cycled up there. We wanted to go and stay at a backpackers. And then we split up and I went solo for the last four days. And I went up this place called, it was out, I think it was outside Riversdale. It's called the Garcia Pass. And you top out and you just look across these like endless farmlands with nothing and it was just like everything just made sense i felt so at home and i knew like that was the moment where i was like this is where i need to be and i need to flesh this out a little bit more and then you know it was always just the thought and then i got back to cape town started thinking about it and i was on my way to school in i think it was in june and i saw this guy and he passed away on the street and obviously no one oh, around no. him and it was just like one of those moments like it was such a profound moment for me where i was just like you know, you don't know what's going to happen in your life. Like, tomorrow is a blessing, if I'm completely honest. And I was like, this is the, in my journal, that date. I was like, this is the day I'm going to fully commit to can whatever remember. dream I have. Yeah, I can remember. It was the, th I think it was like the 3rd of June. It was written in my book. Which year? Last year, 2023. Oh. When I fully committed to going on this trip. <laughs> right. That's not long. I mean, it's not, it's like. Nearly just, just under a year ago. Yeah, yeah, just a year ago, really. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's it's not a lot of time, I mean, to, what goes into planning Absolutely. for something like this? You know, like, 
I've had lots of conversations about like how much planning you act, you can actually do, but a lot of it is just procrastinating. You just need to get a shell. So that's just like a rough idea of what you think is going to happen. So like what routes you're going to take, where you're going to stay, and just have a vague idea because at the end of the day, it's such a big expedition. So many things are going to happen that are going to be out of your control. Correct. So it's just about really just about having a shell and having a plan. Like it this? doesn't have to. Yeah, it doesn't we, have to be uh, too extensive. Yeah, all right, man. I want to. I want to dig deeper into that plan, into that shell. <laughs> yeah. So let's put some flesh into that yeah. shell. Um, explain to us then. You know how that journey went about. Yeah. So now I've got this idea. I'm going to pitch it to who was the first person that you spoke to, and and who did you pitch this to, and and then what were the steps that you took? Yes, yeah, so it started. And how and how did it come about to where you are now? Yeah, absolutely. So it's <laughs> the first people I spoke to were my parents. <laughs> Money. Nah, to tell them. Yeah, exactly. I need money. <laughs> Please help me. I've got this crazy idea. And friends, everybody thought I was a bit crazy. Mm. I probably still do think I'm a little bit crazy. But essentially how it started was the first thing that I did was I started trying to... I was initially actually going to go to South America. I wanted to do the North of South, Amer- South America to the South. And I started reading about like these sorts of trips and stuff. And there was a guy that did a similar route to me in the early 2000s. And I thought it would be so beautiful to sort of follow in his tracks and see how the African continent has changed since then. I mean, that was exactly 20 years ago that he did it. Mm. So it started with that and I was like, cool, this is what I'm going to do. And then it started with the route planning, which took about three, four months for me to do. And that was like, I'd work a little bit every day. And that's make a mark, go and research the town. Is it safe? Like, are there hospitals? Are there shops? Are there places I can possibly sleep if anything goes wrong? Um, So it was the route. And then just sort of fleshing out why I wanted to do it because that's the most important part because you know you have to figure out if you're mentally ready to do something like this the only way to do that is to flesh it out and try and answer questions that you don't even know the answers to yet or even know the questions to it so just writing about it a lot so let's pause on that let's speak about why yeah (laughs) the the big why yeah it's just it's like a Simply put, it's burning desire to see the world and experience life in the simplest form. You know, like we all have our comforts that we have in houses. You know, some of us are more blessed than others. Mm. And I want to go and experience the world in a very simple form. But like I still will have the comforts of my computer, my phone, the ability to get food and stuff. But I think it's just a desire to go and see the world in like a way many people don't get to see the world and to document that and to share that story with other people. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so what, now you've got all of this, you've planned yeah. the route, you've now, now what, what more did you need to do? Surely you need um, funds for this. Sponsors, yeah. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like, the big thing was getting a bike sponsor and yeah. <laughs> You did, like I sent out emails, I called companies in the States, all over um, South Africa. And, you know, I, I just kind of gave up at one point. And then a friend of mine reached out to me that I used to do a lot of downhill skating with back in the day. And he was like, you should come and join this thing called the Rat Race at Rook Cycles. And I was like, cool, like I'll come and join. And then he was like, dude, like I can get you a bike. You just need to like flesh out what you're doing a little bit more. I wrote the proposal for Rook Cycles and the rest is history. They gave me a bike and now I ride for them and they're sponsoring all my parts for the trip, which is super expensive. Mm. That's probably like the biggest expense for me. Mm. Um, yeah. So there's the, yeah, the bike and they're just reaching out to other people. Like the big issue also got involved. They were the first people that published a story about the project. Mm. Um, and then that's also how Ways for Change got in contact with me because they read the article and I was looking for an organization to partner with. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now that you mentioned Waves for Change, why did you choose the Waves for Change as the beneficiary of uh, the fundraising efforts? And what does the mission mean to you personally? Absolutely. So the the big thing was working with the mental health organization, obviously like um, cycling, so that's sport. So just mm, trying to mm. put those two together, the use of sport and mental health and how can we make a little a baby out of that. And Ways right. for Change does exactly that. They, they use sport to um, address a very prevalent issue, which is that like the mental health amongst young people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, indeed, indeed. Now... 
let's touch a little bit more on the mental health. It's a yeah. critical issue today, Absolutely. right? Especially amongst the youth. And it's it's really sad to see that. Because when we go back, and I think mom can also, you know, relate to, we were very carefree. I think it's because we weren't exposed to so many vices um, yeah. that the youth are just, um, exposed to. So how do you ho- hope your journey will raise awareness and support for um, mental health initiatives. Yeah, so like obviously, the <laughs> for the many different ways you can go about raising awareness for mental health. Yeah. I'm just choosing a far more extreme way to go about that, and it's it's literally just about I'm placing myself in a very uncomfortable situation. You know, I'm going to be sleeping in a tent in the bush for two years. It's going to be rough, and if I can document that two years, yeah. Mm. So it's it's about getting uncomfortable with getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. And sharing that with people, that's, I think it's a very relatable form for, for many people, mm. especially the young people. Like yeah. Young people like crazy stories, you know, and they can relate to that. All right, all right. I mean, I mean this journey is going to take, what, two years, you say? You're hoping? I hope two years, if, if all things go well. <laughs> Nothing happens along the way. <laughs> All right, all right. I'm sure it will go well. So your journey will take you through, you said, 34 countries. 34 countries, yeah. Okay. So how did you plan your route and what are some of the key hmm. highlights or challenges you anticipate along the way? Yeah, so the, like the big part of the route is I, I spent a lot of time just looking at East Africa because obviously that's the start. And that's like East Africa is where I like, sort of, Ball chasing Adam's brand, like initially, you know, that's where I put all my time and effort into. So like, East Africa. So you're from here, you're going Mozambique, Tanzania, oh wow, yeah. Kenya. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> um, okay. Beautiful. So yeah. So the route is planned around like I, I spent a lot of time in those like four or five countries because there are like insurgencies in Mozambique. So what I do there is I go all the way west in Mozambique, and then I go into Tanzania and like the north. Um, the south, the southwest corner of Tanzania to avoid those insurgencies. So that's where I won't be along the coast. Same with Ethiopia. That uh, there's lots of stuff going on in the north at the moment. But at the end of the day, like I'm cycling, so I've got a lot of time to figure things out, especially with the route. And a lot, a lot of it is going to come up to just talking to people as I go. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Okay. So mentions a few countries. <laughs> so that just for the listeners to know, you know, this is what you're going to be going. This is where you're going to be going. Yeah. So it's uh, Mozambique, Tanzania, Kenya, Ethiopia, Egypt, um, Libya, Liberia, Morocco, wow. Sierra Leone, Mauritania, Gabon, Benin, Angola, uh, DRC, Namibia. What are the other sure, ones? Sure. Okay. Guinea Bissau. <laughs> Lots. Right, <laughs> lots, lots, lots. All right, let's take a break on that note and we'll journey further with Adam Jacobs, as I've mentioned, a 22-year-old Cape Tonian and has built the inspiring Chasing Adam brand around his passion for cycling and his message to get out there and get moving. So, What, what colour socks are those? What is that socks actually, all about? I'm sponsored by these guys. They oh. give you free socks versus socks. Yeah. Hey, cool, and they man. F- my favorite socks in the whole world. Okay. I've got like 20 pairs. I was just going to ask now, <laughs> please don't wear the same socks for the no, week no, now. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Look, mom is laughing. <laughs> yeah. Mom, the youngsters are like that. Eh? They're lazy like that, right? <laughs> I know. Your mom says yes. I'm only joking. But we can't, we never know. I'm actually in all my mom's clothes. This is my mom's. Oh, this wow. My, mom's, my shoes are my dad's. Oh, wow. <laughs> are you serious? And the, and the, and the hat? Didn't know this is mine. Okay, at least something. <laughs> all right, all right. So, and I'm sure when you when you're packing, you're packing a, b- a bit of a bit of your family. Yeah, always. Right, always. all right. We're gonna get to the packing, but in a bit. But let's just remind the listeners: we are going up close and personal with Adam Jacobs, a 22 year old Cape Tonian. You're so matured, though. <laughs> you know, you know. And, and and has built the inspiring Chasing Adam brand around his passion for cycling and his message to get out there and get moving. I like that. Get out there and get moving. Yeah. I find our, our, our youngsters, our youth are very lazy. I agree. So so what is get out there and get moving? How did that uh, saying come about? It was just something I thought of. Like, it was like a natural thing. Like, how do I market Chasing Adam? Like, what's, what's going to be my punchline besides... 
Shaka Mahalo, which I always say. What's just that? get out there. What's that? Shaka. What is <laughs> it was that? a thing my friends and I started saying. On oh, it's, it's like, just the thing. Like, you know, when you say Shaka, that's like acknowledging somebody. It's like a surfing thing. And okay. Then mahalo is like for nothing. For nothing, so yes. Like you're, just, you're saying hello for nothing. Oh, okay. Like shaka say, Mahalo then it's for not Shaka you. Mahalo, baby. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. But yeah, uh, get out there and get moving. It's just like, I, I'm cycling. It's just to inspire people to go do whatever they might, I don't know, be inclined to go and do. Hmm. Sports wise. All right. So yes, and so um Adam is is wanting to raise one hundred thousand Ran. And of course, um this for the the NPO called Waves for Change and he's obviously past, partnered with them. And Adam hopes to make a significant impact on the lives of children benefiting from waves for changes uh, programs and it's uh, around mental health of uh, vulnerable children in South Africa which we tend to you know take for granted and perhaps overlook so he's creating hoping to create that awareness around Absolutely. mental health in yes. youth all right so we spoke about you know <laughs> you're traveling through 34 <laughs> countries and um our brand and communications manager, that was yeah. her, that, that oh, yeah. came in, yeah, yes, Rishni yeah. um, Ali, yes, yeah. and she was very excited um, to hear your story. <laughs> and indeed, we have, um, you know, in the communities, I see they've taken to cycling. And so you, you know, just sharing your journey yeah. is an inspiration to many. So let's, let's journey on. And, and we spoke about, you know, you planning your route and looking at the highlights or challenges that you anticipate along the way. Mm. We spoke about perhaps the, um, the, the challenges and how you're going to overcome that. Mm. What, are you, what are you hoping in terms of highlights um, on this journey? Highlights in this journey? Well, I think it's just great. Just like little places that I know nothing about. Like places like Togo and Benin where I know nothing about. It's hard to really read about them, find information. Mm. Just to go and experience that and document it. And to be able to share that with people, like that mm. is like the most amazing thing for me. I think the the biggest highlight of the whole trip is going to be sharing the whole story with everyone. Like it's not I'm not doing this for myself. Like I want everyone to experience this journey with me. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that we will be able to, you know, depending on 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 um, reception as well, and yeah. that we'll be able to perhaps, you know, link up with you and hear yeah. how you've how you've come, you know, got along with with yeah. uh, in your journey. So we'll see how that goes. So you you also mentioned that you will have limited digital connectivity. Mm. And um, are consciously restricting your digital engagement. Okay, so how do you think this will enhance your experience? And what are you hoping to learn from this? I think it's more like a digital detox. Yeah, definitely. But it's it's also just to like firstly, it's to save battery and mm. data on my phone. Like I'll be using my phone and my cameras to film on, and then it's of course just to be as present as possible. Like I don't want to engage with people that aren't around me too much which is what you do through your phone you know I want to experience everyone in front of me in the most heightened way possible and I think the only way to do that is to remove um, your cyborg other bit of yourself your phone mm. Yeah. Mm. all right all right so 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 cycling such a long distance is physically demanding Right. Yeah. So what does your training reg regimen look like and how are you preparing both? So let's speak about the physical preparation. Yeah. And then there's another the another side to that. You need to be mentally prepared for this journey. Yeah. Okay. So take us through um, that preparation. Physical preparation has just been eating a lot of food, carbo loading. <laughs> really? Just, Where is it going? I don't know. I still can't <laughs> figure that one out. <laughs> But yeah, just you know, just having fun on my bike, not pushing myself too hard. I cycle almost every day, and that's commuting, and then I'll go for an actual ride. For the last couple of months, I've sort of stepped away from that. But yeah, just keeping strong, making sure I'm riding often, so my body's used to that. You know, so when you say keeping strong, um, Adam, how do you how do you keep strong? Is it just let's 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 what is the what is the the, the day for Adam, the yeah. start to the end? Yeah, so like when I'm working, I'll cycle to work. After that, go for another ride, maybe like a 40k ride, go and do some climbing on the mountain. And then if I'm not riding, or if I know I can't ride, then I will just do some workouts at home, some strengthening exercises. 
Mm. It's pretty simple. Like you can't, at the end of the day, you can't really train for something like this. The first two months are your training. And that's why like the whole route is broken up into, like the f- first couple of months are broken up into 50, between, between 50 and 80 kilometers. And then I start pushing the kilometers up. Mm. So my body gets used to the, the load of the bike because it's heavy. Yeah. So yeah, the, the actual training is going to be the first two months of the trip. <laughs> okay. That's how it works. <laughs> oh dear. All right. All right. Now let's get to the, the that's the physical part. And, and yeah. how confident are you um, where that is concerned? Very confident. At the end of the day, like I have 12 hours in a day to ride 50 Ks. Like if you break that up, you can do five Ks here. You can have a little break. You can do some writing and then carry on um, and do the rest of it another time during the day like mm. doing 50 k's over 12 hours is pretty chilled is that so i think most S- people can do that i just think they haven't tried it um let's see <laughs> should we get a bike ahmed ahmed says don't get me okay okay <laughs> don't look at me either because i'll push it yeah, i'll also, push the bike <laughs> yeah definitely like the thing is i'm like fit and stuff and uh. like, it's also with the whole trip i don't th- ever think about cycling thirty-five thousand kilometers I've never ever, like, if that thought comes into my head, I immediately just kick it out. I only think about that first 50 kilometers that I have to cycle. There we That's go. all you need to do. There we go. You yeah. don't let your mind play any tricks on you because then it's just speculation. You don't know what's going to happen. So that is the mental preparation. Yeah. Okay, talk to us about the mental preparation. Like, yeah, so how do you know you're ready to do it? As mm. if you're able to do something like that. Like, if you're able to just think about this trip as the first day, I don't think about the next day, like what I need to do in the next month. Like it's all there, but I never ever let that get the better of me or like scare me. Because also, like I'm scared at the end of the day. I'm very, very scared. But fear doesn't need to be a debilitating thing. Fear can be very positive, mm. and it can push you to to do amazing things if you if you learn how to tap into that. And tapping into that isn't just spending time in your head. It's about talking to people about what you're doing. Mm. You know, hearing like how they perceive what you are doing. And then you get answer, like you can ask yourself those questions, you write it down. And there are many ways you can do it. But if you if you can do it like that, you sort it. <laughs> Indeed. Let's go to the WhatsApp line zero seven eight six ten eleven twelve. Assalamu alaikum Jamila and Adam. Is Adam having anyone cycling with him? <laughs> and how and, and the safety along the continent. Mm. And his crying face. Someone is very concerned. And that's the first thing we asked, dear <laughs> listener. So, Adam, do you want to yeah. answer the very worried, concerned listener? Absolutely. So, I don't know if I can comfort you. No one is cycling with me. I'll be on my own. <laughs> but, and yeah, also I'll be sleeping in a tent on the side of the road. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that comforts you at all. But yeah, people have definitely voiced their interest in joining me for sections here and there, which is very exciting. Some people want to join for entire countries. Some people will be joining for the ride out. But for the most part, I I do want to be on my own. And I think that's a decision I've made. And that's just the way it is. And we're never alone. We are taught taught we're never alone. There's always a higher power. There's almighty that's with you. Right. But we need to tie our camels, which you are doing. (laughs) (laughs) So on that note of support, what kind of support system do you have in place for this journey? And are there perhaps specific people or organizations that are helping you along the way? Absolutely. So ways to change the NPO that I'm raising funds for. They Mm. have partners all over the continent so uh, they work alongside um, uh, orphanages and organizations scattered all over the country so i'll be going there to talk to schools and stuff nice probably yeah and then also what that means is like you know you make connections there they lead you to the next place and that's a place to stay for the next night Mm. and like the whole point of the trip is to connect with people you know like one person tells you to go to the next person it's the same thing like I had on my trip to Nature's Valley, you know, talk to one person, they're like, okay, cool. Talk to that person, then you stay at that person's house. Mm. Yeah, so it's just about community. And then, yeah, the organizations that are supporting me, Rook Cycles too. So they're supporting me with all my parts. We'll do drops in different countries where possible. Probably do a big one in KZN because um, I don't know if I'll be able to do it in Mozambique. And yeah, it's just ways to change in Rook Cycles at the moment. Mm. But if there are any other people that want to get involved, you know where to find me. We'll share Jesus. those. We'll yeah. we'll share those um, details in a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. In in terms of 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 support and organisations and 
um, I think primarily your focus is around youth. Yeah. And you've mentioned these orphanages and in the different countries. Um, so your main focus is then, you know, being more around youth? Yeah, to an extent, yes. Like, all the youth anywhere between, it's like zero and 18, I guess. Mm. Yes, definitely. Maybe 18 and 35 also. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe 35 to 52. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and if you're like me, we stole you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you also plan to document your, your journey through yeah. weekly blog posts and social yeah. media updates. So what of co- what, so let's, let's speak about that. What kind of content, um, content can your followers expect? And also how can they stay connected with you throughout your yeah. trip? Yeah, so this is like quite a tricky one mm. because, like I said, I'll have limited digital uh, connectivity. Yeah. So what I'll likely do for the South Africa section, I will keep stuff on. doesn't necessarily mean I'll be in contact with people. Like that's just for me to share content. And then when things, like when I go out into uh, more barren lands, um, I'll put all my devices off for six days a week. And then when I know I'm going to be in a town where I can have connectivity, that's when my comms will go back on and I can talk to people through social media and stuff and through my website. Yeah. But for the most part, it'll be off for those six days. Mm. And so keep it on for one day. Yeah, so how are you going to connect? Is it um, just uh, is it going to be li- like a live little videos? or? Yes, yeah, so it'll be... I mean, it, it depends on which platform it is. Like mm. Instagram will be stories, um, reels, reels, images, and then YouTube will be slightly more long format stuff that's like you know, maybe a month's worth of cycling that people can look at. The blog post will probably be more often because it's very, like I can just send a writing over WhatsApp or even an SMS back to somebody in Cape Town and they just put it into the back end of my website and upload it for me. Like That's very simple. So I think blogs will probably be the most consistent of the content for people to um, experience. And that will be everything from what I've been up to, maybe what I've been eating. Mm, yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I want to know. How many animals I've seen, all those things. You know. Right. It'll just it'll be as much, as many things as I can think of. Mm-hmm. So, what are you planning on packing? Oh, uh, you. My because I mean, you, 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 chaos. you, you, you. Um, what? You're going on cycling, of course. So, yeah. how much can you pack? Not much. So, what are you packing? So, I have two forty-liter bags. So they're the bags that clip onto the bike. They're called pannier bags. So it's similar to motorcycles. Right. You know those oh, panniers yes. that have motorcycles, yeah. except they're not like robust bulky. and steel. Mm. They're not very bulky. They're um, fabric and they are waterproof. So 240 liters at the back. So that's 80 liters. Obviously, you don't pack 80 liters. You go 60 liters roundabout and then 225s in the front. And yeah, it's, it's fairly simple. So that makes simple. it quite... Uh, f- everything is fairly simple, Ahmed, you yeah. <laughs> but I'm just thinking, <laughs> you're cycling and, and <laughs> the terrain is not all just smooth. I'm no, sure there's uphills, there's a bit of gravel, there's this, that... It's very and, heavy. And, and I'm thinking... Uh, yeah, I'm on a gravel bike, which is nice. So it's sort of a hybrid between a road bike and a mountain bike. Mm. So it, it does allow me to go a bit fast. The tires are skinnier, but I can still go in the dirt with it. Mm. But yeah, the whole setup, me included, is like 150, 120 Ks. Yeah. Goodness. Okay. Like, I'm not that heavy. My yeah, bike, yeah, yeah. Just the bike and all the gear on the bike is probably about 60. Mm. Yeah, the bike on its own is like, 13 kilograms. Wow, that's super yeah, light. Because it's steel. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now I want to know then. So, um, oh, what's in the bags? Mm, yeah, what are we packing? <laughs> so, if, most importantly for now is a waterproof gear. Because uh-huh. obviously it's storming in the Western Cape. So, waterproof pants, waterproof jackets, thermals, uh, windbreakers, all that jazz. And then I've got like four t shirts. Three shirts, like button-up shirts, so I can look funky on the road, <laughs> and then two waistcoats for when the sun is shining. Really? Yeah, okay. like two funky pattern waistcoats, um, some long pants, two pairs of three pairs of shorts, three pairs of shoes. One are cycling shoes that I'll probably use for the whole of the South Africa section, and then I'll change to flat pedals. Mm. Um, yeah, so two pairs of shoes there. Some got my camera, of course, to shoot stills on. Then yeah. I've got gopro with like three batteries at the moment i've got three hard drives um external hard drives and i've got my laptop mm. with bags of cables and um, yeah camp- power like bank stickers. power banks are three big power banks right my tent which is 
weighs like two kilos, which is amazing. And I can actually squeeze my bike into it. Wow. So if there are nights where I think it is a bit sketchy to leave the bike outside the tent, I'll just chuck it into the tent with yeah, me. it's your baby, man. It is my baby. It has and to go it, with you. Come, that baby. That stolen, I've got to walk. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to walk. <laughs> and mom is probably worried. What is my child going to eat? <laughs> So what do you, like, uh, energy bars and stuff like that? Not really. Like, I, yeah, going back to the training I've actually done is, mm. so for running, when I was running a lot, I used to only do liquid nutrition. Sure. Like, when I did, like, long races and stuff. But now I've gone strictly whole foods. Like, now I can stomach, like, a bowl of pasta and then go and cycle 50Ks and I'll be fine, which takes a long time to be able to do because your stomach is obviously shaking a lot. But yeah, for, like, a day... It's literally just cook pasta, some tuna, high protein stuff okay. in the morning, and that can last me all the way to supper. All right. Yeah. Mom is going to be worried. I'm a small guy, so I don't need that much food. All right. <laughs> you, wait, are you ready to take, make, 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 take a note of what you weigh and, and, and take, a, obviously, a before and after yeah. f- a pic? I'm going to take a selfie every day of the trip. Right. Put that together. <laughs> so your fundraising goal, um, Adam, is 100,000, which will benefit t- uh, 10 children through Waves for, ch- um, ch- um, Waves for Changes uh, Surf Therapy Program. Yeah. So let's elaborate on the impact that this support will have on these children's lives and the communities. Yeah, well, firstly, just, you know, one kid that's able, to, has access to doing something that many don't, mm. creates a ripple effect and... The community, you know, kids see that and they're inspired. Maybe just like people are listening to the story and feeling inspired. I think it's exactly the same. And the surf therapy is just, it's brilliant because it takes kids that don't have access to the channels to like deal with mental health issues or don't even know how to like express emotions. And it creates a safe space for them to talk about those things, learn the skills to address your issues Hmm. in life Hmm. and also have fun with sport. You know, that's the start of it, like to release all those endorphins. And f- yeah. for little kids, that's the most important thing. Yeah. So have fun. Have a fun indeed. So how are you planning to, 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 to raise this fun in terms of how are you planning to generate this, um, you know, the, the, the monies? Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's all down to the people following the journey okay. to donate to Ways for Change. If they think my cause and Ways for Change cause is great, which I do. They're more they can donate and they can do that through my website also through my website i'll be selling merchandise and i'll probably release uh, like photo journals that's i haven't told anyone about that as i go oh. yeah and 80 percent of that will I'll, I'll decide on that but a portion of that goes towards funding my trip and then the rest goes to waste for change mm. clothing it's like 20 percent goes directly to waste for change and then rook cycles also so they um for the bike that I'm riding, it's called a Rook Scout. For the bikes that are sold, they will donate a portion to 5%, I think, of the nice. sales to the organization. Mm. Something like that. I might, my math might be a bit off, but you get the idea. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's share that, um, uh, your, your, your website, so that we, yeah. we know, and your social media And I'll share handles. those details with you guys. Mm. You can share it now? Yeah. Tell Where's us. My do you need your phone? Yeah, no, I mean, share the, the, the maths, like the percentages. No, 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 we don't, want, we oh. don't worry about that. Oh, we worry about the, the detailed website. website. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. So all my social media is Chasing Adam. Okay. TikTok, it's very simple. TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and mm. Instagram, and YouTube's all Chasing Adam. Same with my website, ChasingAdam.com. It's sweet and simple. So you can just punch it into your search bar and... All my things might pop up. We're going to be chasing <laughs> Adam. Adam, you, the, so this is all happening on the 6th of July, which Spot is... On. Saturday. Which is Saturday. Yeah, okay. I know. A bit so scary. for those that want to go... <laughs> <laughs> For those that want to come and say bye to you and wish you well, yeah. um, give us some details. So we'll meet at Rook Cycles' new store, which they're busy setting up. Um, it's on 129 Bree Street in Cape Town. So that's at the Neighbor Goods Market. We'll meet there at 10, um, chat, I don't know, maybe shed a few tears, <laughs> say goodbye to everyone, and then make our way to Stellenbosch. So people can come anywhere between 10, 10.30. Because mm-hmm. knowing everyone in Cape Town, everyone lives in Cape Town time. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> so it's 10, 14, 30. Yeah, you But know we that. won't say that. We we say say half, that. We'll say half past nine for 10. Spot on. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have um, everyone coming to say, you know, a and support and yeah. um, to wish you well on your journey the 6th of July. Mm. And when do we see you back? 
in 2026. Goodness. My, my prefrontal cortex will be just about developed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what message then or advice um, do you have for young people who might be facing their own mental health challenges or contemplating taking a big challenge like yours? Yeah, firstly, for those that are struggling, like you, you're never alone. And mm. I know that the hardest step is always the first step. But taking that first step is the most liberating thing. Just going, talking to somebody, you know, whether it be just anyone you feel comfortable, just take that first step and I promise you everything gets a bit better from there. And then, yeah, what was the second part? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, for, for those that are um, contemplating yeah. and maybe thinking, should I take, take on a big challenge? Yeah. Um, like like what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Like you're, If you have a dream, you must follow it and you must, where there's will, there's way. You'll find a way to execute your dream no matter what. Like as Paolo Coelho says, the whole universe will conspire mm-hmm. towards you. And that's, it's it's literally just as simple as that. If you want to do something, you must do it. You'll find a way, no matter what. I can tell you that now. Indeed. Indeed. But just take the first step. That's mm. the hardest part. <laughs> do you want to, um, just in wrapping up then, um, we how can people support your fundraising efforts and stay really? updated on your progress throughout this, of course, wonderful journey? Yeah. So through my website, you'll find all the links to Ways for Change, what they do, and also how you can donate towards them. There's a link directly to that. If people would donate, like to donate directly to me, they can do exactly that all through my website. Mm. So try to keep it as simple as possible and just keep everything in one place. So it's Chasing Adam, Adam. easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yeah, just, your final, <laughs> just your final message uh, to all of us, Adam, yeah. that when us, the, the Radio 786 family. And if you want a perhaps final me- yeah, message to dearest mom as well, if you hey, like. Yeah, final message to mom. <laughs> Thank you for supporting me, mom, and not thinking I'm crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, final message is just get out there and get moving. It's as simple as that. Go try something new. Challenge yourself. It's lots of fun. You learn a lot about yourself. <laughs> Indeed, and we wish you everything of the best. Do, um, you know, keep in contact with us. Yeah, and yeah. like I said, we're hoping to link up with you and to find out, you know, what your progress is like yeah, and yeah. what you're up to. So what I could also do is I'll share with you guys, I'll share my plan, my one-year plan, so you guys can know where I am. Fantastic. Let's do that. All right, wonderful. So there we have it, a remarkable young man by the name of Adam Jacobs, 22-year-old Cape Tony, has built his inspiring Chasing Adam brand around his passion for cycling, and his message is to get out there and get moving. So on the 6th of July, which is this Saturday at 10 a.m., outside Rook Cycles in Breast Street, Cape Town, that is when it's all where it all begins adam will embark on a remarkable journey around the african continent and this of course is to raise 100,000 rand for an npo called waves for change